Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series, Interviews with Aurevillians. And today, I have a spe very special Aurevillian, my grandson, Aaron, Hi. who was born here and raised in Oroville. Mm -hmm. Namaste, Aaron. Namaste, Narad. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about your early life in Oroville, as far back as you can remember? Sure. Um, well, I uh, I think I remember the earliest back used to be um, climbing mango trees already when I was six years old, trying to get the the, the nicest mangoes at the top of the tree, and um, and you're running around with with my brother and in um, in my dad's garden, and we had horses and. And a huge, uh, a huge big garden to play mm. with all the animals. Mm. And uh, every birthday, we were looking forward to going to the ashram also, to uh, to yeah, to spend some time there. And and uh, we always got this. Um, we always came to see to see a a lady here for her homemade puffed rice after the ashram. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was pleasant times. So, what was your schooling? Um, so I went to uh, pre-crash, uh, kindergarten, and then transition school, and then uh, future school. So all of those schools are, are based in, in Oroville and um, located in Oroville. And um, so, yeah, transition school was, was um, is, is from, I think, 10 to 14. And uh, then after transition school, it's um it's more like high school so future school was future high school, school yeah was high school mm -hmm. yes and um yeah so did you like all of them yeah yeah i really i think uh, the schooling system here in orville is uh is quite is quite uh, exceptional and it's it's uh it's quite unique since um since there's teachers and and students from all around the world um, just mixed together and different, all kinds of different languages and different cultures, um, which is one, yeah, a huge part of, of, of what makes up, what makes Oroville Oroville, no? Did you um, learn any languages? Uh, yeah, so I learned, um, I learned how to speak four languages fluently, um, which are English, which is my mother tongue, um, German, which is, uh, my father tongue. And um, then Tamil, I grew up here in India and uh, in South India, in Oroville, and I've had, I've taken Tamil classes in school, but also just uh, speaking with my friends and, and a lot of, a lot of the, the, the Tamil people that I, that I uh, consider to be friends and that have taken care of, care of me throughout my life. Mm. So I've learned a lot from them just speaking, you know, back and forth and, um, so yeah, I, I uh, the grammar and all of that is quite hard, but um, ah. but I can I can speak quite well. So and one more language, French. And then French. French. Yeah. So French. Um, my first few partners were French, and um, and then that leads on to also my uh, my higher education after future school. So after high school, um, I went to France for for f a few years. And uh, I learned to, to become a professional chef in France. How did you and get interested in that? So I've always been, uh, I've always been interested in cooking and loved cooking. Um, both my parents are, are good, uh, good cooks, as you know. Yes. And, yes. Um, and, and yeah. They got you and interested, they got, you feel? They got me interested, yeah, oh. since uh, I remember since... Since I'm five five years old, I I was making some really nasty omelets for my dad and for my mom. <laughs> they were uh, they acted like they loved it, but it was a big splotch of splotchy mix of all kinds of random random ingredients thrown in in the pan. But um, but yeah, then I just got better and better, and and uh, I just I really I really enjoy bringing bringing joy to to others and. And uh, what what better way to do that is what better way to do that other than through food and cooking? Yeah. And, and and what did you specialize in? 
So uh, I specialized in, in proteins mostly. Um, I've always been working around, when I was in France, working in, in five-star hotels and uh, with um, in, in Michelin-star restaurants. Um, I was usually always working around fish, meats, and uh, with sauces. Um, of course, I've circulated throughout the whole kitchen in, in all positions and posts, um, but mostly... Mostly but fish I and seem meat, to so. remember some desserts that you were specializing in. Yeah, I mean, I I worked uh, for for a time as well as a pastry chef oh. um, in in France in um, in Brittany, and it's called Camper. It's a it's a city there, and um, it's really beautiful on the coast on the coast of of Brittany, and so there I was a I was a pastry chef for a time, but um, but yeah, to be honest, I I do prefer prefer uh, the the hotter side of the kitchen let's say but um but i enjoy all aspects of of cooking and and making delicious delicious foods and drinks now uh, i understand that you and your brother were involved in surfing yeah can you give me a long history on that how so, you began it uh, sure. did you form this company? so um no we didn't form it um a few of the past, uh, the older generations. So there was there's a brother, um, um, a pair of brothers, and um, they are called Juan and Samai, and they um, they started up this surf school. I think now it's been twenty years. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, just about twenty years, and it's called Kaliale Surf School. So CAS in in short, and. Um, and then we, my brother and I, we started working there, just giving a hand, um, just helping out here and there, cleaning, um, washing the surfboards, and um, and slowly, slowly learning how to how to teach also. And we were doing that in exchange for for getting a surfboard and being able to to surf there, um, and just getting the equipment and stuff like that. Um, so and they would give us some petrol money from time to time. Um, but I think I started working there when I was, uh, 13 oh. and my brother, when he was also, when he started, yeah, he started a year earlier than, earlier than me. So he must've been also about 13. Are you and proficient surfers? Uh, we're, yeah. I mean, my brother now hasn't surfed in five years. So since he's been in, in Berlin, um, starting up his business, but, uh, but I've been surfing quite, quite frequently and. And yeah, but it's like a little bit like riding a bike. So you might need a little bit of practice, but you always get back into it. Ah, I see. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we both started when we were 13 and, and through throughout uh, future school, through, so throughout our high school, we were working there to to help out and, and also at some point started giving lessons. So giving, teaching, surfing. Mm. And um, we got paid and we got, uh, yeah, we got we got some, some money on the side for some pocket money. And uh, yeah, of course, surfing a lot the whole time. And um, we actually started surfing in Portugal when we were, when I was nine and my brother was 10. Oh. Yeah, our, um, yeah, we had a, we had a family, a family from um, from my dad's side. We had a family uh, reunion in Portugal. In Portugal. Yeah, oh. and we all the whole family went surfing together. It was it was good fun. Beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. What do you remember of the early Oroville? Um, Growing up in it, meeting different people. Yeah. Maybe you could speak about some of the friends that you knew or still know. Some of those who were very close to you. You already mentioned some Tamil people who had mm -hmm. a major influence on your life. I'm sure yeah. that my daughter Shali also has raised two good boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever you would like to share. Well, um, yeah. I mean, I, I of course, uh, I of course have have um, too many too many uh, Tamil and, and Indian friends to count. Mm. And um, I mean, a lot of basically half my half my class was was Tamil and Indian people, and um, and yeah, I mean those. I think the the people that I hold hold uh, closest to me, 
um, would be them because I I grew up with them and um, and I still I'm in contact with them and we see each other we see each other quite often and uh, and yeah so so I mean I don't I can't necessarily say that there's there's one or two people in in uh, you know one or two specific people that that have really really uh, made an influence on me and and influenced my life and in mm -hmm. yeah I think it's 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 a mix and of, what about of everybody from the west friends from the west hmm. um did you have more association with the tamil people than with westerners mm, not really not same really. yeah it's same. just about the same so tell me about this early oroville as you experienced it through your eyes well early oroville when i was younger um it was mostly mostly we we're yeah as kids we were quite uh we were quite somehow closed minded and we only like to concentrate on one thing and you know whether whether it's uh, of high importance or low importance we really s tend to concentrate on one thing whereas the older you get the more your mind expands and the more you 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 concentrate on many different things at the same time and multitask and all of that so when i was a kid i remember i just i i loved sweets and i loved sports and and uh i mean yeah running around in the dirt whether it's wet mud red red mud or red dirt um i was always dirty shally would always get very very angry at us for for uh changing our clothing to change our clothes three times a day <laughs> because <laughs> when it when it was raining we would all go to the sports ground and play have huge mud fights with like uh, 25 25 kids oh, gosh. and everybody just throwing mud at each other in each other's hair mm -hmm. and faces and and uh and it's this red thick red mud you know oh yeah so um, uh, imagine cleaning trying to clean that out of kids clothes you know <laughs> Now, uh, what kind of sports did you like? So, uh, as as what I said, surfing, at? surfing. Um, before surfing, and while I was working in the surf school, I was um, I was doing competitive swimming. So Ooh. I was going to Bangalore and I was going to Delhi and uh, and places like that for for swimming competitions. We we had a we had a, we had a, um, an Oroville swimming team. Oh yeah, so that was that was quite. Uh, quite a time in my life very competitive and very very hardcore and full-on and swimming i think still is just is probably the best all-rounder sport that anyone can do it um yeah it's so it makes you so so healthy so strong and um yeah so swimming surfing quite a lot around water um otherwise i played a little bit of football um i skated quite a lot so skateboarding um mm. but then broke a few too many bones and <laughs> mm. um no that's not true i've never actually bro broken a bone uh, skating but it was it's it's better to fall in water than on concrete let's just leave it at that okay <laughs> yeah um otherwise rock climbing went uh, to oh. jinji quite a few times jinji. you know in jinji they have these huge uh, yeah these huge uh, granite boulders no? so bouldering is a type of rock climbing where you climb around the boulders and and um yeah so free climbing also a lot of did you have connection with ashram people in that um not so much no um to be honest the only the only connection that i've had with with uh, with ashram people is when i when i came to the ashram every birthday uh, um and would uh, we would come to see you also and um yeah i mean i've i've uh, i've made a few a few ashram friends like ashram related friends over the years but um but yeah not so much connection not so much connection there with the with the ashram so tell me a little bit about a little bit more about when you were growing up in oroville and yeah. the society of oroville the structure hmm so we can I can start off by saying what Oroville is to me and what or what Oroville should be very important to me. 
um and i've i've thought this since since i'm a since i'm a small boy and um so Oroville is is a safe haven and uh for me it's a safe haven of of human unity and it's a safe haven that should be peaceful and and tranquil for for all of humanity basically and and um yeah i mean so i've i've grown up always thinking that uh always knowing that i have that i have this place this wonderful place that's so beautiful full of the people that i love um that i can always i can always come back to and and be a big part of you know um so yeah keeping that in mind i i also went out and explored the world quite a lot and um and yeah then come back and of course at some point things change but where i still do believe that uh that orville is 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 a safe haven and um yeah and i think that that at some point soon i'm gonna also also come back to orville for for a few years and and try to try to contribute in any way i can mm. and put some energy into into making or making orville the place that uh that I always thought it thought it was and and know it can be. Yeah. Very good, very good. Tell me a little bit about uh, your work in uh, in Germany with your brother. So um, we, uh, my yeah, as I mentioned before, my brother he started um, a business in Germany in Berlin to be exact. Mm, and uh, it's a pizza truck business. So he is that unusual? Yeah, for for Germany and for Berlin, it's it's un unusual. Oh. Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot of food trucks, but uh, there's only three, including my brother. There's only three uh, pizza trucks, wood fire oven pizza trucks in in Germany. So oh. yeah, and um, so I went to I went to Berlin to see my brother and to work with him. And we started off um, uh, for we started off to with a few festivals, so these huge um, these huge uh, music music festivals. They're either uh, either live music or more DJs and and um, and electronic music and stuff like that. So we did a total of six big festivals. Mm. Um, some of them had more than 85,000 people. Oh. And, uh, so we would go there and set up and, and just, yeah, start making pizzas. And we were, at some point we were a team of seven at some point, uh, at some point we were also a team of, of 11 or 12. And, um, for one of the, one of the festivals we were open 24 seven. So for seven days, 24 hours a day. And yeah, that was that was pretty pretty intense, but we had we had an amazing time and and uh, of course ate a lot of really good pizza. But <laughs> at some point, you couldn't can't even smell the stuff anymore. <laughs> you know, you're are you ranked in among amongst the best pizzas in? Um, I don't know, not probably not yet, since it's quite no, a fresh uh, company. Okay. But uh, and it, that that stuff takes time. But um, every festival we went to, they said that we were the best food truck that they had, Ooh. and that uh, we sold the most food out of out of all the other trucks. So, so that's always, of course, good to hear. And but um, but yeah, it it was quite intense, even even comparing comparing that to to my experiences uh, working as a chef in in some high class kitchens in France. So yeah. Yeah, it was it was a now, lot of work. I remember you complaining quite often that you were too small, mm. and I'm not growing, and my brother's growing, <laughs> and look at you now. Yeah, yeah, I was a little bit of a late bloomer, huh? Yeah, mm. but you certainly are mm. very strong now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ate a lot of a lot of my my own uh, good good cooking. <laughs> yeah. No, just um, I usually. When did I usually, you start to spring up? Um, so I was still quite small when I was sixteen. 
I see. And then when I hit 17, um, I started growing and and I don't think I've stopped yet, apparently. <laughs> How tall are yeah. you? Uh, 187, 188. Yeah. And weight? Um, I am uh, 82 or 81. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't checked recently, but... Have you had any interest in any of the arts? Like what? Music, dancing, um, martial architecture, martial arts. I yeah, I I've been doing for the past uh, on and off for the past five years martial arts. So I've been doing mixed martial arts. Um, so some Brazilian jiu jitsu, um, some MMA kick um, kickboxing and wrestling. Um, yeah, so Muay Thai, like Thai kickboxing. Um, and yeah, I'm not a I'm not a, a violent person, I believe, and I'm I will I will never will hopefully ha never have to use it. But but I really I really do enjoy being staying fit and 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 um, yeah the the coordination that you get from from doing from doing uh, martial arts is is really exceptional and and I I just have a I love I love martial arts. I think it's. Mm. I think it's super it's super important for everybody to to at least know how to d defend themselves a little bit and 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 yeah like I said it really keeps you fit and keeps you strong both body and mind and uh, to keep both of them aligned and yeah otherwise uh, I used to play the drums oh yeah so now now not since since many years but um but yeah I enjoyed that a lot and I guess it's also in some way like riding a bike. You never really, never really forget it all. But uh, but it, drumming is 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 uh, it's quite something. Also, it's a lot of repetitive work and and takes a lot of time to go to to get the beat down. <laughs> yeah, we saw an eight-year-old boy on the tabla mm -hmm. so, a month ago. Or so it, yeah, or at Nevis, it's quite something. Yeah, I'd like to ask a little bit down. About my daughter, your mom. Sure. Could you tell us a little bit about your experiences in life with her and how she raised you? So my mom, she always raised both me and my brother with with so much love and so much care and and yeah, we definitely couldn't have couldn't have gotten a better mom just to start off with. But yeah, she. She was always both both our parents are very headstrong people and very very uh alike in some ways and un and and not not alike in others but um but yeah i mean she she always uh she always kept us in line but with with a lot of love <laughs> and um yeah i mean she's she's definitely the one of the strongest people I know. She is uh, both physically, mentally, in every way. She's, yeah, she's the best mom that uh, I could have wished for. I, of course, meet your dad every day mm -hmm. uh, when we begin the work at the Matramandia. Yeah. Could you say a few words about him? Sure. So my dad is probably also one of the strongest people I know. <laughs> Um, both my parents, one thing they have in li um, one thing they have in common is, uh, is that they both work super hard for, for what they believe in and, um, and they don't stop until, until they get the job done, no matter what it takes. And, um, so yeah, my dad, <coughs> my dad working at the Mantra Mandir building, building this, uh, the, the trial lake. So he's, uh. Yeah, he's working, working really hard, and and doing, doing the best he can, and, um, and that's all. That's all we can ever ask of anybody, you know. But, uh, but yeah, he loves. He loves. Uh, he loves projects. Having multiple little projects to work on. Um, so he has a master's in in um, mechanical engineering, and um, he's quite an architect also. Um, so at home he has lots of little machines that he likes to tinker with and, mm. and, uh, yeah, he likes motorcycles a lot that we have in common. Oh. Um, so we both have now, uh, 
we each have a, an old Royal Enfield, um, the first first model Royal Enfield that that came out in India, and um, and yeah, so we both sometimes when we have enough time we go home and we work on our bikes, listen to some music, <laughs> and um, yeah, just <coughs> tinker around, get our hands greasy. <laughs> so and you did that together with your dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's one of our one of our uh, pastimes that we that we really enjoy to do. Who were your favorite teachers in school? Um, and what did they teach? So one of my teachers uh, when I was in high school was Shali, was my mom. Um, she she taught English literature, and um, she was a very good teacher. Um, did she also teach biology? Yeah, so at some point she also taught biology, but not when I was not when I was uh -huh. in, in in school. She uh, she taught biology for years also, but um, but to some of the earlier generation, yeah. And um, yeah, otherwise probably Mary, um, Mary Kapoor. Um, she was yeah, I mean, she was quite strict, but very very efficient and super super kind hearted and. And uh, yeah, very intelligent. What did she teach you? So she taught us um, in transition. So before high school, um, she taught us most of our most of our our subjects except for for languages. So she taught us also English literature. She taught us uh, math. She taught us biology. Um, because yeah, in transition, in that school. Every, each uh, class has one specific main teacher who teaches them who teaches that class multiple different um, multiple different um, different subjects and uh, and then a few subjects we would have separate teachers for for example like tamil um tamil we had a, we had a separate teacher for tamil um french we also had a separate teacher so mostly just languages we had we had different teachers but um but yeah, and then once we went to high school, then we had one teacher for for each subject. Yeah. And um, yeah, Claire also. So Claire Stewart, mm -hmm. she she is a very a very sweet sweet teacher also. She was very kind with us and and taught us I a lot. Claire, this is not the Claire from. Um, I'm not sure if you know her. Uh, you probably probably not. Yeah, I knew another Claire. Her she used to be Dietra. No, her name was Dietra. She had birds. People no, would bring not her that one. injured birds all the time. Hmm. Did you ever meet her? I don't think so. Hmm. It doesn't ring a bell. What no. senior Oromillions did you have any relation with? So I mean, not necessarily teachers. Yeah, I mean that that was a, that's a good. Uh, Another good good memory that I have of when I'm when I was very very young, um, I used to go to Fertile. Um, so Fertile is a farm, and uh, I used to go there to see Johnny. Um, you know Johnny, right? And um, Johnny was Johnny was a he's a senior of Orville that has that had had also made a, made quite an impression on my life. Um, he was always, he's a, he's a crazy, crazy guy, but very sweetheart and, and always also always doing something, you know, now he's, I don't know, he must be 83 or 84 and he's always just running around on his farm, milking the cows still at seven in the morning and, uh, feeding the chickens and, and tinkering around with some, with some woodwork and, and all of that. So, so yeah, when I was young, we, we used to go to the, to his farm every Sunday uh, in the morning and uh, milk milk his cows oh. um, and yeah harvest some some chicken eggs um, make some ragi dosas yeah every Sunday was ragi dosa day <laughs> um, and yeah that was those were good memories he always he taught me how to use a uh, use a lot of a lot of wood tools um, and we also used to tinker around quite a bit uh, make all kinds of wood pendants and and stuff like that. That was that was fun. Um, you had routers, router. 
No, no, no. no. All by hand. All, by hand. <laughs> All little small files oh. and even the drilling machines was the, oh. you know, the old fashioned hand, hand, machine. hand, hand powered drilling machine. Mm. Yeah. And um, yeah, of course, you as a, as a senior Orvillian have, have had a, has had a big imp- impact in my life as well, which and I'm very appreciative of all you've taught me. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, again, there are so many, so many names that come to come to mind. Yeah. Hmm. Can you think of any in specific? No, I'm trying to think of, think of some stories that come to me, but <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Frederick, so oh. Frederick is my great uncle. He uh, he he used to teach us quite a lot of sports as well. So we would uh, we would go play tennis with him, and um, and yeah, we would do do some uh, some football. And yeah, Frederick was always was always quite active. Also, so we would go to Certitude into to the Certitude field, and uh, and yeah play he would teach us teach us all kinds How of those old sports. Is he now? Is he my age or yeah older? he's your age, yeah. Yeah. I think your age or maybe a little older, yeah, I don't know. I'm not too sure. And Yana? And Yana. Yeah. Yana so Yana is my grandmother. She uh yeah, she also is definitely someone that I that I hold in, in very high regard. Um she all her life she has been been interested in in horses um so at some point she was she was quite uh quite the the horse rider so Ooh. she would uh yeah she would she would do competitions here in in india when she when she first came to came to orville and um and then at some point she she started uh horse training so tra- training training horses and uh and yeah, so she she taught me how to ride also. Um, she so taught you, you know how to ride quite yeah, well. Quite well, yeah. Oh, she she used to bring uh, both my brother and I. She used to take us to to the beach um, when there wasn't so much traffic on the on the road. Uh, she used to take us take us on the horse, like on the on the horses, and we would we would uh, walk down to the beach, and then start uh, cantering on the on the ocean side. And um, yeah, that was that was beautiful. Um, what she would do, she would uh, since we have quite a quite a big plot of land, um, open space. She she would adopt uh, injured racehorses from all around India mm. and uh, sort of nurse them back to health if they had an injury, and um, yeah, nurse them back until back to health until they were they were we were able to ride them. Mm. and um and then yeah then take care of them and and keep riding them and and um yeah so she she really taught me also how to how to take care of animals and and how to of course ride and that's i love riding haven't done it in, oh, a, in a while but ah. yeah yeah i have a feeling that that most people that that uh are living in and around orville are quite are quite active in one way or another no Yes. Either yes. Um, either sports or or yoga or other activities. Building yeah. construction. Mm-hmm. Any experiences there? Sure. So, um, a very good friend of mine is called. Uh, his name is Philip, and he is in. He he's uh, based in Oroville also, and. Um, he has a, a company called Treehouse Community, mm. and um, both me and my one of my best friends called Mahindra. So we uh, we both, when since we were quite young, have been working with Philip, um, just helping out most of the time, um, working with wood and and to 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 build tree houses. So we would uh, we would go up into the tree and and look at the tree, and he taught us how to build a treehouse without without damaging the tree at all. So no, I mean some people we've seen I've seen some tree houses, and they just literally drill straight into the bark of the tree and put pins, you know, to hold the the 
to hold the whole thing up and um and that's super injurious for the tree you know because then it can start rotting and it's and it's of course painful for the and tree he, philip used no nails so philip doesn't use doesn't injure the tree at all um oh. all he does is that he he um he trims the tree um in a certain way that it's the that it doesn't have so much weight like top weight so he trims just a few of the the branches with a lot of leaves and um and yeah so he just prunes the tree and then starts building the building the tree house <clears throat> on the on the tree but uh, but in a way he uses um like rubber tires so he wraps rubber tires around the branches and then sets sets the the base of the tree house on that you know and um and he uses he's he's also a little bit of a of a crazy crazy scientist but super intelligent he 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 makes all kinds of all kinds of systems to to relieve the the tree of any of any uh, injury in injurious no. stress stress Str uh, str yeah wait S strenuous that's the word i was looking for strenuous um weight so he makes he builds all kinds of uh, contraptions with with huge um, lorry like truck springs and um, little pulley systems and all kinds of oh. stuff i can i can't even be begin to to describe but um but yeah no it's really interesting what he does and he's been all around the world they've made till now i think uh, 67 tree houses how all big are these well they can be from from the size of this room to four floors he oh made his his home he lives in his in a tree house and his tree house is four floors yeah four stories in Oroville. yeah it's in uh, on a on a huge um uh, teak on a huge teak tree like the the base of the tree is like that oh my god and it's beautiful and he he may he built his house on that tree and and it's huge it's i think uh, 18 meters high and four stories like four floors yeah and um and you see it i mean the tree is is super healthy it's it's sort of growing just around and with the tree house and and um and yeah it's been there now for for five years almost so oh. so they're super they're super uh they're super tough and well built these are interesting things to us to have young people here also mm -hmm. because um not too much is spoken about the the great developments mm. in Oroville. Yeah. And did you have any experience with the dams? Or with did you dams? know people who worked on the dams? No, to be honest, I haven't. Um, yeah, no, not really. I mean, the only other, other sort of uh, experience I have um, in one of these in one of these uh these companies is mostly is also with uh growing up here in india with uh waste all around us with plastic and trash yes um we're we're very exposed to 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 all of it you know to i mean to the dumps to the huge huge amount of endless plastic and stuff so i with our schools um a few times a year we would have just these these uh, mass collective um collective uh, mm. groups of uh, to pick up trash and to 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 clean up uh, clean up a little bit the forest the forests around in and around Oroville and um like that um so there's this company called Wasteless India and they used they used to used to organize these these uh, big big Orville cleanups yeah reduce reuse recycle <laughs> um, so what kind of recycling is being done now other than composting which is quite large because mm. I'm involved in that but yeah recycling of plastics of tires so now Anything? more and more India is starting to develop uh, systems to to recycle plastics more and all of that um, but still nowhere near enough to to make to make a real difference <clears throat> um, yeah I mean Orville itself has has its own its own recycling center 
and uh, they try their best to to recycle as much plastic as possible um turn them into to uh, recycled plastic bags um and other sort of um other sort of reusable reusable materials um and yeah i mean orville is is uh there's quite a lot of people like i mean for example philip he also builds his tree house with tree houses with use, using uh, old tires and stuff like that so in and around orville there are a lot of there are a lot of different different um people who who use who try to to think up intelligent ways of of using trash and um and rubber and and all of this other stuff as uh you know to to be able to to think up a way of to reuse it somehow um and yeah i mean they make also these uh they they started making clothes now out of bamboo i've heard bamboo but also trash trash yeah it's called uh there's a while ago it was called this trash and show so it's basically <laughs> a it's um yeah it's a it's a show of uh of people who it's like um they there's this one this one designer or a few designers they they design clothes and they they use they use uh, only trash to to make the clothes so yeah it's it's, it's pretty funny well, now my next question you can be critical, hmm. but uh, what are your favorite restaurants in Oroville, if any? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I would say number one is probably Umami. Umami? Umami, yeah. Where is that? So Umami is um, just right next to the Oroville Bakery. Um, ah. Yeah, so I can I can send you the location. If you'd like to try it out, they they are probably by far uh, the best best quality food I've I've had in Oroville. Oh, um, they have yeah they have really good uh, really good meats. They have good seafood, um, and everything is usually quite balanced. It's of course a little bit pricey compared to other restaurants in Oroville. Is it an Oroville restaurant? Uh, I don't believe so uh -huh. no i think it's a it's um it's, private, out, it's private. a private owner yeah um but the chef is a, an italian guy and he used to he used to have one michelin star not in that restaurant but he used to he used to be the the head chef of a of a restaurant with a one michelin star i think oh i don't know what else i could ask you can you can you think of anything you'd like to share with the world sure um I mean, yeah, I guess everybody, everybody that uh, that is listening to this already somewhat knows what Orville is, no? And many don't. Many don't. Huh? So, yeah, I mean, Orville is basically basically an experiment of of human unity, no? And um, and yeah, I mean, I think I think that for the time being, we 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 aren't uh, we aren't a complete a complete. Uh, we aren't we aren't the complete image of human unity, but but I think all experiments have have trial and error, and I think that uh, yeah, we just we just one thing we do very well is learn from our mistakes, and I think that there have been a few mistakes made, but many people are learning, and um, and yeah, Oroville is is still my home and is still is still one of the places that I love the most in the world, and. Um, for whoever hasn't seen Oroville and and visited it, I think uh, I think it's a it's a definitely definitely one place to to add on to the bucket list. Have you read any of Mother or Sri Aurobindo? Yeah, I have. Um, not not recently. I've been yeah I've been quite uh, quite out of it recently. But um, but yeah, I have a little bit. I've read um, yeah I've read a bit of Savitri and I've read also some of some of mother's books but uh but yeah it's been a long time i should actually my girlfriend maria she's she's been been getting more and more interested in in savitri and in in, in mother's books and she, oh. she's been she's been uh been reading quite a lot these days so maybe i'll just i'll steal one of her books and and get back into it good yeah 
Thank you so much, Aaron. Namaste. You're welcome. Namaste, all.